Decision for Life. Welcome to First Baptist Church Indian Trail. Uh, I found a, a little quote uh, by a journalistic humorist uh, that's uh, really won a lot of awards for his writing. And uh, here's what he said. He said, all of us are born with a set of instinctive fears of falling, of the dark, of lobsters, of falling on lobsters in the dark, or speaking before a rotary club, and of the words which terrify me, some assembly required. You know, everybody has fears, don't we? I talked to somebody just this week that talked about uh, how they were afraid to speak in public. Uh, some people have fear of heights. Uh, I know you know plenty of those. Um, I can look up and never be bothered, but you get me up and make me look down and I'm in major trouble. Um, some people have a problem with uh, really losing their hair. Somebody came up to me uh, after the last service and said, uh, Pastor, do you have fear of losing hair? I looked back at him and I said, no, but you need to fear losing your church membership. Um, I didn't count these, but it, it's pretty known fact that there are 366 fear knots in the word of God. One for every day uh, of the year and God for his loving kindness threw in one for leap year. Uh, you understand, he's a thoughtful God. He, um, he, he put this in there, don't be afraid, more than he did about love, more than he did about receiving major offerings. He put it in here because God does not want us to live in fear. Uh, Joshua chapter one, verse nine, the Bible says, I command you, be strong and courageous. Uh, do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That, that's a powerful, powerful word. Here's the deal though. You know, that's easy to read on the screen. It's easy to read in our Bible. But that's a lot more difficult than to live out day in and day out of your life. That, that's a hard place. That's a hard thing to do. So one of, my, one of my goals today, one of my great interests today for those of you that are here and those of you that are watching by live stream, I want us to get to the point uh, during the course of this day that we take the fear that we're experiencing and we let that fear help us to grow spiritually. You can be strengthened. Uh, and, and, and motivated from these fears. So let me, let me help you because there's a lot of obstacles, there's a lot of barriers, and so I'll just ask you the question this morning, uh, what, what are those hindrances to your spiritual growth? And then I want to help you for the next few minutes to identify what it is that is holding us back. So out of the word today, let's begin in Matthew 14 in verse 22. Straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch, that's three o'clock in the morning, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Ego ami, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's really you, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said to him, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, 
save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. So when we're studying this passage, one of the things we're going to lead into here is to try to help us to identify what those fears are that hinder us from living the complete and fulfilled life that we have in Christ. So how do we go about that? First of all, here we go, you ready? First of all, admit your fears. Admit you're afraid. Do you know that's hard to do, especially for men? I find that men uh, oftentimes have a major reluctance in admitting that they're afraid of anything. They want to be macho about everything. Uh, they want to be manly about everything. And, and you ask them what they're afraid of. Oh, man, I'm, I'm good. I'm cool. I, I don't have any problems. It's all good. And, and they would just simply uh, ignore it. But the fact of the matter is, uh, if you really want that fulfilled and complete life, it all begins with admitting your fears. Now, one of the things you may not know about me, but my wife will verify it. I love to scare people. I mean, I'll hide around the corner and jump out at them. Uh, I, I'll, I'll do lots of stuff just to, because I absolutely love that terrified look on their face and the way their body trembles and shakes. I, I, I get so tickled. Uh, sometimes I can't help myself. I, I literally, when I go home sometimes and I don't hear Kathy or see her, I kind of sneak in just a little bit and, and just stand there in the room when she comes into the room and it just scares her to death because she thought she was in there all by herself. I may even go a little bit further than that and I may slam the door or something when she's not expecting it. I, I just think it's hilarious. Now, notice at 3 o'clock in the morning, they're in the midst of this storm and they look up and they see this image that is walking on the water and the Bible says that they cried out in fear. It's a ghost. The word there is the Greek word where we get our word phantom from. And the Bible says that these men were terrified. They were overcome with fear. I want to ask you a question this morning. What fear do you have that keeps you from living and being fully alive in your walk with God? Um, my wife and I watch this little program on television when she records it and I'll watch it with her. Um, it's, a, it's a program called God Friended Me. Anybody watch God Friended Me? Anybody? You, you watch some of that sometimes? I watched one of the episodes the other night uh, with Kathy, and uh, there was an atheist on the program, and uh, he had just broken up with his girlfriend that he loved with all of his heart. And, and nobody could figure out why he did, and finally the main character in the program confronted him about it, and the atheist then said, you know what, uh, uh, she's a Christian, and, and, and I've been a, I've been a self-proclaimed atheist, and, and, and everybody knows uh, that that's about me, and, and I, I fell in love with her, and the closer I got to her, the more I began to question my core beliefs, and that I came to believe that maybe there was a God, and I didn't like the way that it made me feel. I was afraid, and so I cut it off. I broke up with her. I didn't want to face those fears. Maybe you're here today or you're watching online and uh, you're an unbeliever. You've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior and you have kind of a warped concept of what it means to be a Christian because your idea of Christianity came to you. Your perception of a Christian came as a result of watching some crazy uh, a television show or some movie. Or maybe, just maybe, you saw and watched and observed somebody's life that claimed to be a Christian and you have fears about giving your life to Christ because of 
what you have been misconceived about. Maybe you're a believer here and you're struggling with fear as well. Maybe in these last few weeks when I've been uh, sharing so, uh, sharing sermons on how that you ought to be witnessing to your one and sharing your faith. And, and you have this major fear of sharing your story because you're afraid that if you do, that you're going to be rejected. Maybe somebody is going to shun you and you don't want to go through that experience. You know what I found out? Some of the best soul winners that I know, some of the strongest witnesses that I know today, uh, some of those that blab the gospel at every opportunity that they have were at one time people that were terrified to talk to anybody about Jesus. But they admitted their fears. They admitted their shortcomings. And they pushed through them and they didn't let fear dominate them and they shared their story and they found out that God could use them in a powerful way. So if you're really going to experience a full life with Christ, it begins by admitting your fear. Second, you have to act in faith. Now that's a classic step. And may I say to you, it does not come naturally. To act in faith is not something that really we're born with. If you'll remember when you were growing up, when you walked out of the house, your mama would warn you over and over again. Now, before you cross the street, you make sure that you look both ways. And your mama told you that because she knew naturally you weren't going to do that. And you had to be warned and you had to be told. Do you know that it's a huge step to do something that you have never done before. Watch verse 29, if you will. And Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. <laughs> do you think for one minute that the idea of walking on the top of the water had ever occurred to Simon Peter? Absolutely not. It had never occurred to him that the molecules of water would join hands under his feet and hold him up as he would walk across. But he took this major step of faith. He saw Jesus and he got his eyes on Jesus and he said, look what he's doing. And Lord, I'd like to do that too. Let me come to you. And Jesus said, come. Now hear my heart just a minute. You really need to be careful when you start taking risks. Uh, you better make sure because there is a fine line between faith and foolishness. Do you know what the difference was with Simon Peter? Simon Peter stepped out on the word. He stepped out on faith of what Jesus had already told him to do. So before you venture out and start being a risk taker, you make sure that it lines up in accordance to what God has said uh, in his word. You know, when I look at my spiritual journey in life, uh, I have to come to grips with the fact that every time that I've ever gone deeper with Christ, every time that I've ever grown spiritually with the Lord, it's always been as a result of taking risks. I, I thought back this morning uh, to this building that you and I are in and that we worship in, and, and I thought about back in the early 90s. Uh, and it was a major step of faith. It was a major risk. A bank should have never loaned us the money to build this building because when you looked at it on paper, it looked virtually impossible. But God said, and we did, and God blessed the obedience. Be careful. Always step out uh, on the word. Let, let, me, let me share something with you. You ready for this one? Courage is not the absence of fear. Um, courage is doing the right thing, even though you are afraid. Uh, I don't have to tell you. You see it every moment of the day on television and read it in the papers. There's a lot of fear today. Can I get a witness from folks? There's lots of fear but when you take a risk in the midst of it, God will bless you. Now watch this. If you refuse to take risks, what's going to happen? That fear is going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. 
What if Simon Peter had just stayed in the boat? What if he had that desire? What if Jesus had said, come, and he said, no, I'm not going to do that. I, I, don't, I don't want to do that. I, I'm afraid to do that. I want to tell you what would have happened. His faith would have not grown. His fear would have grown and gotten much worse. Let me just ask you, what risk do you need to be taking in your life? What, what do you need to come to grips with and say, you know what? I, I admit that I have this fear in my life. I am afraid of the unknown. Well, God's word is leading us to come to the place that we act in faith. Maybe you need to come to the grips with the fact, I need to go tell that person about Jesus. I, I, I know that, that I have fear of how that person is going to respond. I know that I'm afraid that it's risky and I may get rejected and shunned, but I know that it's God's will for me to share my story uh, with that person. Maybe you're at that point where you're afraid financially and you hear what God's word is saying. Take a risk financially here and trust me with your finances and you're afraid to do that. Maybe you're one of those people that God is leading to start a community Bible study in your home and you're afraid of what the neighbors may say or think or maybe afraid of failure in the midst of that. God says to act in faith. So I believe with all of my heart, God is saying to some of you that are here and many of you that are watching, he's saying to you today, get out of the boat. Get out of the boat. I heard Jerry Vines, uh, really my favorite preacher of all time, my hero in the faith. Uh, I heard him preach the message uh, from Matthew 14 once. And he made this statement. He said, uh, don't you laugh at Simon Peter. Don't you make fun of him because he sunk. Don't you make fun of him because he went under. At least he got out of the boat. The other disciples never bothered to get out of the boat. What happens when you get out of the boat? What happens when you take that step of faith? Let me give you number three. You ready? You can anticipate that the fear is going to return. I wish I could stop at point number two. I wish I could say, all right, admit that you're afraid and now go act in faith and give the benediction and we be done. But I can't do that because the story doesn't end there. Uh, the fear uh, came back. The reality is fear is going to come back. It did with Simon Peter. He got out of the boat. You remember, he was scared to death. He saw this ghost walking on the water. He was petrified, if you will, to discover then that it was Jesus. All of a sudden, he's filled with great courage, and so he takes that leap of faith and steps out of the boat, and then what happened? The fear came back when he saw his circumstances, when he saw the wind, and when he was overcome by the waves, he took his eyes off of Jesus and got his eyes on what was going on to him and around him. And he began to sink in the midst of his fear. And he cried out, Lord, save me. I, I know what that fear is like. You say, Pastor, you, you have fear? Yeah, I, you know, it, it comes back. Even uh, when I am witnessing and telling people about Jesus, which is one of my favorite things to do, uh, I still have those fears. When I get my assignment on Connect Night or I'm out visiting and I've moved to go visit with somebody and, and I'll drive up into their driveway, all of a sudden that fear begins to take over and I'm thinking, well, maybe they're not home. <laughs> maybe, maybe they're not home tonight. I'll just leave my card and let them know that I came by. Now, Let's suppose this fear of rejection, let's suppose that this fear of failure grips you um, and you fail in the process of that. Maybe you're like Simon Peter. You, you, you get out there, you take the risk and you're trying for your faith to be exposed and you find yourself failing. What happens? What do you do? Uh, let me give you number four is that you accept the presence of the Father. All right, everybody in the building, I want you to look this way. If you are uh, 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 at home and you're watching or wherever you may be with your cell phone, I, I want you to put away every distraction and I want you to hear this statement because really it's so very important for all of us. You ready? I hope you're listening. 
when you begin to sink and when you begin to go under, Jesus never does. He stayed right on top of that water. And the Bible says when Simon Peter cried out, Lord, save me. You know what happened? God's word says immediately. Jesus stretched his hand out and snatched him out of the water. Let, let me just say something to you. God doesn't work part time in our lives. He is present with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The problem is you and I have a part-time memory. You, you, you would think that if he stepped out on the water and he began to walk and he had his eyes on Jesus, you, you, you would think that that would be pervasive in his mind, but it didn't take him but a second or two until he forgot that the source of his strength was right in front of him and he got his eyes off of him. And then he began to sink. He forgot. Ladies and gentlemen, God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He's saying to all of us in the midst of what we are going through in this nation, what you're going through in your life, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And there is nothing that we cannot accomplish together. Philippians 4.13, you may have it on the bumper of your car. It may be on the window. You may have a little plaque somewhere positioned in your house where you read it every day, but it's become a platitude. It's become a cliche to you. But, but let me remind you this morning, in the midst of our fear, in the midst of our anxieties, in the midst of uncertainties, in the midst of the unknown, here the Word of God says, I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. I want to give you the context of all of this. He's lost his job. He's in a foreign country. He's isolated from his friends. His enemies have destroyed his reputation. He's in jail. He's facing impending death. And yet he turns and he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Who of us wouldn't have had fear in those circumstances? I certainly would. But God says I can do all things through Christ. So all day long, those of you that are at home and you're facing whatever it is that you're facing, those of you that are here all day long, you need to be breathing that in and breathing that out. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Breathe it in and breathe it out. Now, let me give you one more thing and we'll close. Announce your praise to the Father. Look at verse number 33. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him saying, of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Watch this, watch this, watch this. We started out the beginning of the message in fear, but look where we wound up. We wound up in worship. Hallelujah. You understand, when you're in the midst of worship, you don't have time to worry. When you focus on God, you don't have time to focus on what makes you afraid. They were celebrating the very presence of God and that's what you and I ought to be doing today and every day of our life, no matter what kind of virus, no matter what kind of circumstance, that's what we should do. So today in your home, today right here in this church, all week long, let's lift up our hands and our voices unto God and just simply say to him, God, thank you that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. God, thank you that you saved my soul. God, thank you that you're with me wherever I go. Thank you that you've already won the victory. Thank you that you are more than a conqueror in my life. Thank you that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me all week now I understand 
Some of you got some big fears. <laughs> some of you got some big fears that a 20-minute sermon is not going to help with. But I D-double dog dare you. Come to the place that you admit that you're afraid. Admit that you've got fears. And, and you may, listen, listen, you may not be able to take a big step of faith like Simon Peter and start walking on water immediately. But I'll tell you what you can do. You can take a baby step of faith. Huh? You can take a baby step of faith and begin to watch God as he takes your fears and he begins to strengthen your faith. On 9-11, when that airplane hit the Pentagon, the people in the Pentagon immediately started running as hard as they could to get out of that building toward the exits. And in a minute or so, a strong voice came on the intercom and said, all duty personnel return to your stations. And everybody in that duty uniform stopped in their tracks, made a, an about face, and ran just as hard back to their duty stations as they were running away from their duty stations. But ladies and gentlemen, we have a uniform. The Bible says that you and I have been clothed with the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand something, folks. You and I have a much higher authority than the governor of North Carolina. In Isaiah chapter 43, he says, Don't be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have saved you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this major reminder today that fear is nothing in the world but a tool that you can use to strengthen our faith. And I pray in the midst of this coronavirus threat, God, that the enemy is trying to use to defeat your people, I pray that you would take it and what the enemy has meant for evil, you will bring about good. God, help us to keep our focus of attention on you. Help us not to get our focus in on what's going on around us. We've been clothed with the righteousness of Jesus. You said together there's absolutely nothing that cannot be accomplished. We are yours. You've called us and given us a name. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us. I pray that you would get glory in the midst of all of this. While your heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I wonder how many of you right now would admit what your fear is. That as an act of faith, you would say, Lord, I want to come to you. I want to bring my fears to you. God, I acknowledge that you are present in my life, and that you're never going to leave me nor forsake me. And God, when this is all said and done, I want to worship you. I want to give you glory. There may be many of you, many of you watching that don't know the Lord. You're an unbeliever. And the big fear that you're carrying around in your heart today is that if you were to die, you'd spend eternity in hell. The big fear that you're carrying around today is that I'm afraid that my sins have never been cleansed and washed. I'm afraid that my sins have separated me from God. Well, friend, there's hope for you. If you'd be willing to turn away from sin and by faith, Trust Jesus Christ. I want you to pray something like this with me right in your home. Would you pray, Lord Jesus Christ, 
I believe that you died on a cross for my sin. I believe that you raised from the dead. Forgive me of my sin. I receive you into my heart right now. And with your help, I'll live for you the rest of my life. Head still bowed, eyes are still closed. Friend, if you prayed that prayer just then as I prayed it, would you in Jesus' name tell somebody in your family what you just did? Would you in Jesus' name pick up the phone and call a friend and tell them what you just did? Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fpcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.